lift our hands and worship the Lord tonight. If you believe, why don't you just thank him for what he's done? Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Lord, we believe. Hallelujah. We believe in you. We believe in your word. And it is forever established. It's settled. There's no negotiating in the courts. The word is forever established. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him once more. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your holy name tonight, Lord. Bless your holy name tonight, Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be in church tonight, aren't you? Yeah. I said, I'm glad to be in church tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Now, I know it's Friday night. Back when I was coming up, Friday night, the house would be packed. Yeah. Now it's going to the grocery store night. Praise God. And they'll come on Monday or, or, or Sunday. Praise God. Amen. I'd rather be right here in the, the best pool hall in town. You wouldn't find me in the pool hall even if I wasn't saved, glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so glad to be here tonight. Amen. I got up and sang with my young folks because I figured it'd be better me singing twice. Hallelujah. So uh, we appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. You can be seated tonight. Thank you for being here. And uh, we're looking forward to what God is doing here at A Branch Holiness Church. And... Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm one of those kind of preachers. I don't come to churches because of the flavor. I come because of people. Wouldn't matter to me if it's Baptist on the sign. Help me while I preach. Hallelujah. God's so good to his people, and we're thankful for him tonight. So good to see each and every one that had uh, come out tonight to be in this service. And uh, appreciate those especially, uh, not aside from, but appreciate those that came early to pray. Some were here at 6 o'clock. Amen. We were praying, praying, and praying. That's what, that's what brings revival is prayer. Come on now. Yeah. Hallelujah. You don't have to agree. I didn't pay for your amens anyway. Glory to God. It's the truth. <laughs> I said it's the truth. Praise God. Not, not one revival, Brother Ken Law, in history has ever started with a worship service. It was always started with a prayer meeting. Right. Hallelujah. If we have revival in this hour, we're going to have to pray. Come on now. Praise the Lord. I feel like the Lord wants to speak to us tonight. Amen. And uh, we're a powerful presence here last night. And God come by and blessed us here. Amen. In this service. But I feel like the Lord wants to talk to us tonight. Now you'll find out quick like that I'm not the greatest preacher. I don't have DR and... Uh, post hole digger with a PhD on the back of it and any of those other numbers back there behind my name uh, I, I, I didn't have that kind of education on the Bible uh, I was born and raised in church so I got went to the school of neology and uh, that's what I've got praise God so when I can't do nothing else I just start singing Is that all right when I forget the words I'll just start singing Amen. Praise God. It's good to be here tonight. Amen. I feel like the Lord has given us something to say to you uh, here tonight. Maybe not to everybody. It seems as though there is a, uh, uh, a diverse uh, uh, maturity of folks here tonight. I feel like there's some here tonight that probably don't know the Lord and in the full pardon of your sins. There are some here tonight that maybe have been to church, but possibly been hurt in church. And there are some here tonight that have been in it all their life and don't, don't, don't really matter anyway. We just go to church because that's all we know to do. Well, I tell you what, I don't come to church because that's what I was raised to do, even though that's what I was raised to do. I come because I love him. I said, I come because I love him. Praise God. I said, I come because I love him. I don't have a relationship with holy buns and dresses and suits. I got a relationship with him. Praise God. 
I got a relationship with the Lord. And that's what matters more than anything is that we have a relationship with God. But the Lord began to deal with me, and I feel it so heavily as, as, as the, the singing was moving along. And uh, I feel like that God wants to touch someone's heart tonight. Amen. I love people. If you ever visit our church, I love people. Black people, white people, Spanish people, all kind of people. I love people. And I get them all to come. I don't care where you're from. Right side of the track, left side of the track, on top of the track. Just come. We don't care. I don't know about what church you go to or what heaven you're planning to go to, but when we all get to heaven, I ain't going to go any further. I'm going to go ahead and preach. Praise God. All right, we're going to read in the Bible. Uh, I don't know what y'all read out of, but I read out of the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe Pastor Google can help you tonight, but we're going to try to, we're going to help you out of the book of Exodus, if you will. I, uh, <clears throat> I feel like the Lord's wanting to move. I would say this next week. Uh, next Friday night, is it Brother Rick? Uh, Brother Samuel here is going to be preaching over in Dillon at Brother uh, McMahon's church in the youth service. And um, uh, we would, we'd invite you to come. Is that all right? I guess it's all right to invite everybody to come over to Dillon, South Carolina, the metropolis. Dillon, South Carolina. <laughs> Amen. Be, Brother Samuel will be preaching over there. These young men come to our church. And I've watched them grow in their faith, and both uh, the three on the front has uh, found the calling to preach the gospel, and that's that's good. It makes me feel old that I have to disciple young boys to do this. Amen. But that's all right. Amen. Uh, God helped me along the way. Uh, them older folks did, and uh, we're going to help these young folks. I feel like it is important in this generation to really speak to the youth, because you know what? They're what's going to take my place and the pastor's place and all around the room. They're going to be. And if we don't show them what God can do, they'll never know what God can do. It's not enough to tell them the Bible said we should demonstrate it. What the, what the Apostle Paul said, I come not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but with I come with demonstration. Right. Yeah, Lord, I think we've lost that in our churches. Oh, we've slid over a little entertainment. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody come. Can anybody act Pentecostal for a minute? Will somebody run for the Lord? Oh, we'll take off a running. But where's our demonstrations at? Amen. Where's the power of God? Amen. That God wants to move. I, I want to I wanna help somebody tonight. I'm not here to pick on nobody. or I'm not trying to pastor anybody. I'm not running for any positions. I'm here to help folks. Amen. And the Lord began to deal with me, and I, I just want to I just want to read this. Exodus uh, chapter 15, if you have a Bible tonight, amen, in verse number 9. Exodus 5, chapter 15. Amen. Exodus chapter 15. In verse number 9, we'll begin. If you have it, say amen. 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 Let's read. The Bible said, the enemy said. Who said? The enemy. the enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My lust shall, satisfy, shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hands shall destroy them. Who said that? The enemy. Not God, the enemy. Right. Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Hallelujah. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. The enemy said, I will pursue. And I will overtake. If you can hold your finger there and flip over to Second Kings tonight, chapter 6. Amen. I want to read one more passage and then I'm going to try to talk to you. Um, I'm not going to be long-winded tonight by the help of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Second Kings chapter number 6. Amen. And verse number 15. 
Amen. If you have it, you can again say amen. amen. When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, master, how shall we do? All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. The enemy said, I will pursue. Yeah. The servant said, How shall we do? Oh, thank God. <laughs> and he answered and said, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love it. They that be with us are more than they that are with them. <laughs> Oh, would you pray with me tonight? Father, I ask you to help us. Send the Holy Ghost anointing upon us tonight. Fill us with heavenly fire, Lord, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> hallelujah. Move tonight, oh, Lord, I pray. Give us anointing tonight. We glorify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord tonight. Thank God. Thank God. Praise the Lord. You can be seated tonight. Thank you so much for being here. What, what, before I get into this, I appreciate the pastors that's local that have come to be with us. My good friend, Brother Ken Law, Brother Mac Mahan, and others that I may hopefully have not missed. But I, I, I got to looking in these scriptures tonight, and um, this, this really will make you excited. Now, if we focus... On uh, the Exodus chapter, uh, the enemy said, I will pursue. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overthrow. I will divide, spoil. Amen. I will tear down. I will destroy. I will cause division. The, uh, the enemy said, I will come, amen, to steal, to kill, and destroy. Uh, come on now, help me here. But the other guy said, they that are with us are more than they that are with them. My God, have mercy. The old generation testified and said, thank God for the victory, for the salvation and the Holy Ghost. The new generation says, the devil's been on my back all day. He'll stay there if you put a saddle, honey. But let me tell you, you just got to tell the devil to get lost. Hallelujah. Get lost. I don't serve you anymore. I am a blood-bought child of the King of Glory. Come on now. Praise God. Amen. I, um, I want to tell you something tonight. And uh, uh, <clears throat> I might do a little running around, shouting or whatever. I may not do nothing. But I want to preach to you for a little bit, if the Lord will be my help, on the King has one more move. The King has one more move. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you know sometimes the devil wants you to find, wants to find out what your strategy is in serving God? Amen. Do you remember over there in the Old Testament where, amen, uh, they came to uh, a fella that really could do some damage to the devil's kingdom? Amen. When they took him in, he broke the green rope straps, amen, the vines. But their, their question was, what is the secret to your power? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What is the secret to your power? Now, I was never in the military, but uh, I can tell you this. When there is a battle going on, there is a situation room. There's a place that they put on the table the strategy of how they planned to overcome the enemy. Because here's what they know that he is saying. The enemy is saying, I will pursue. The enemy says, I will divide. 
God. I will overtake. I will destroy you. Come on now. <laughs> I love this. Amen to God. Amen. Aren't you glad that God's given you power over the powers of the devil? I'm not here to preach doctrine to you. I'm here to tell you that the same God that able to roll the Red Sea back, the same God, amen, that gave Samson the victory against all the Philistines, the same God that helped those men in a fiery furnace is the same God that's here right now in this generation. He has given the church power to overcome the wicked one, the devil. Them old timers used to say, plead the blood, plead the blood. I want to plead the blood. Hallelujah. When the devil comes in like a flood, the enemy comes in. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The enemy said, amen, I will pursue. The devil's after you. He's after you. Are you listening to me? I said the devil's after you. It doesn't matter if you're 12 or 102. The devil's after you. Amen. Years ago, a few years ago, I was going through the most crisis, terrible crisis of my life. In the middle of that crisis, Amen. I was born and raised in the church of God. Amen. I, I know what it's like to see the move of God. I saw my father under the anointing cast out devils. We don't see that much anymore. I saw them old timers pray. I saw him one night pray for a, a black woman in an AME church. Amen. She is about six foot tall. She had crippling arthritis like this. Amen. Back in them days, they had Dick's Bibles. Now we got New Living Virgin International, something of the something of the living God. But they had Thompson, Jane, and Day. And that, that woman came up. She come in on crutches. My daddy got the Bible. He had one in big. I mean, it's huge. Amen. If he didn't get it done the first time without it, he'd get that Bible out and wrap it around your head. You couldn't see nothing but letters. Come on here now. But I remember as a little boy that night in that little church. Amen. That woman, the power of God, sat down in that place. You could hear the bones begin to pop in her hands and knees and legs. Oh, hallelujah. The last time I saw that woman, she was going out the front with her crutches over her head, saying, I'm healed. I am healed. But I've also seen the devil sneak in and try to destroy the church from within. Help me now. The devil snuck in. My, my father's passed on now. Amen. But uh, before all of that happened, amen, my mother got weak in her faith. Now, mama was a praying little lady, about five foot tall, and she'd get a hold of God, Brother Clovis. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I'll never forget one time is there's some gossip going on in the church. Daddy said, I don't know where this mess has come from. It's driving me crazy. She said, that's all right. I'll pray. And mama got to praying. The next service, sister so-and-so come up front. Uh, amen. And said, I got laryngitis. Mama told daddy at church that I prayed whoever's in the gospel that the Lord would give them laryngitis. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on now. Oh, the devil said, I'm going to divide. The enemy said, I'm going to destroy. But the Lord said, I will overcome. <laughs> you ain't got a shout. It's all right. Praise God. Listen to me. Amen to God. When the man of God said, Amen, he said, and he answered and said, Fear not, for they that be with us 
or more than they that are with them. Hallelujah. As I look over this congregation tonight, Brother Clewis, I see people that are in need of help. I see some that are in need of help. You might have come here tonight just to see me or see this choir or see these folks or to see how pretty the congregation is or to just show up because, they're, well, I got to do it. Well, whatever reason you come tonight, it makes no difference to me because there's somebody here that needs help. There's young people here tonight that needs help. Amen to God. There's people here tonight that need healing in their body. And we have the church has got to get to a place that every time we come to the house of God, you know what the devil said? Don't go to church tonight. Don't pray today. Don't read the Bible today. Don't go to revival. It ain't going to matter no how. But I tell you right now, if we want revival, God's going to show us that there's more with us. I feel the Holy Ghost in here now. Praise God. Amen. The enemy has come in like a flood and he has destroyed. Churches can't get along. Y'all not hearing me right now. People can't get along anymore. The devil said, I'll divide the church, folks. I'll create havoc in the house of God so the sinner can't get saved. Amen. I'll tear the church apart. I'll create things to do for them so they can't pray and they can't get a hold of God and they're never going to be on time and they can't be here and they can't pray and they can't preach and they can't sing. Are you hearing me tonight? That's what the devil, that enemy said. You think the devil's, the, the preacher's just picking on you? What about your experience with God? What about the devil that we fight every day of our lives? Uh, amen. Preachers, guys, a preacher kid, you know. Preacher's kids get hurt. I saw them when they backed my mama in the corner with their finger in there. And I ain't thought about this in years. But I just feel the Holy Ghost right now. I saw them when they backed my little mama in the corner. Amen. They got chewing her out. Uh, they didn't know how much she'd have prayed for them. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. The devil can crawl on your pew uh, and take the joy of God out of you. Uh, he'll do it. He'll tear you apart like a lion. Amen to God on the serendipity. Can I tell you tonight, the church has got to realize when there's more with us than they are of them. The first time I ever went on an extended fast, I had a man tell me one time, Amen. He said, you church people ain't got no power. Amen. I said, well, that's a joke. Amen. But oh, he was right. Amen to God. It stirred me so. I went on a seven-day fast. Amen to God. He said, I've been in seances when them witches would flow pencils across the room. Amen. And things of that nature. Y'all don't believe me? I'm going to tell you. Don't believe them devils walk in your house at night talking to you kids either. Uh, amen, but he does. Uh, amen. Don't you tell me, oh, y'all not listening now. Uh, I'm here to tell you something right now. The enemy said, I'm coming and I'm going to destroy you. I'll destroy you not from the outside, but I'm going to destroy you from the inside. I'm going to take everything you got and leave you with nothing. Boy, I feel something in this place tonight. Oh, the king has one more move. I'm getting there. Just hang with me a little bit. Praise God. Amen. I've saw the power of God sweep through the church as a little boy. Amen to God. Some of you have been in church all your life. But the truth is it's been years since you've really saw a move of God. You can tell me about it. But we have set so long that our children of this generation has no idea what it's like for the church to stop and cast the devil out of something. Somebody. There's so much depression and bitterness in the house. Hey Amen. Folks can't even focus on God. Hey Amen. Oh, y'all not listening to me. We can't even focus on the move of the Spirit. People are so down and out, constantly down. You talk to them, oh, I'm just going through it. I'm going to tell you something tonight, children of God. The enemy said, I'll divide. The devil said, I'll destroy. But the God of heaven said, there's more with us. 
us than they are with him. I'm about to feel like preaching to you here tonight. Oh, the king has. What are we going to do about this crisis we're in? What are we going to do about the church? What are we going to do? I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to trust God to believe there's more with us than they are with him. I feel him, brother. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel him in the house. Praise God. Amen. Just let me talk to you for a minute. I'm going to talk to the church for a few minutes. Is that all right? Amen. I'm going to tell you the church, you can wear your dues and your buns and all this stuff, but I'm going to tell you something. Your kids, your grandkids, ain't never seen a move of God. Hallelujah. Oh, they know what we don't do, but how in the the world does many of them know what we do? They know where you can't go, but tell me where we can go. Tell me what we can do. Tell me what I can see. Oh, y'all not helping me tonight. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. Amen. It's time that the church rise up and realize that we've got the power in the name of the Son of God. Preachers' kids don't even want to go to church. I feel what I'm telling you. They'll fight you. I know. Amen. A few years ago, I had children in them teenage years, and they didn't get up. They didn't want to go. Amen. And then I went through the worst thing of my life. Amen. The devil spoke to me as clear as day, and he said, I'm going to destroy you from the inside, from your home, from your children. I'm going to turn them against you. Amen to God. I say, oh, no, he didn't. Let me tell you what. There was days that I couldn't even talk to them. They didn't want to hear from a preacher. You're a cult. I mean, you'd hear me right now. The devil come. He said, I will divide. And that's what he done. Amen. It broke my heart. Days that I would cry and ask God to help me. I said, Lord, I raised them right. I preached right. I believe everything I'm doing is right. And if I'm doing something wrong, I want you to show me right now. I'll make it right. Oh, but praise God. Amen. He said, keep preaching. I can't preach it. God not helping me right now. Amen. My old, my youngest boy began to put on truck shows. Amen. He's lifted up trucks. Some of you have seen them squatters. Amen. The Carolina squat. Yep. I've been to them anyone. Amen. I wouldn't go to them shows. That's worldly. And one day I was praying for my son. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, go with him to the show. Come on. I said, God, I can't do that. He said, go with him to the show. Praise God. I told them all their life what they couldn't do. And so one day I went. There was 700 trucks showed up. I mean, there was people, and it wasn't godly. Amen. And I stood in the middle of that track. I ain't never been to a track for in my life. I stood in the middle of that track, and I looked around, and the Holy Ghost got on my soul. And I said, God, how can I? a preacher of this gospel connect with this mess right here I don't know what to do about this I feel out of place I was out of place amen Bill Gates to what they're singing I can assure you crap didn't show up either Come on now, y'all not looking funny at me here. Don't you look at me funny. I don't care what you look at me. You can look at me however you want to. But I'm going to tell you what God did. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the kids in the uh, in their little club got killed. Oh, you hear me what I'm saying. I said, God, how can I build a bridge from my age and what I know to this generation right here? Because they know not God. 
And the Lord began to move in this situation. I'm telling you right now, I feel this. I don't know who I'm preaching to yet, but I'm, I'm going to figure this out before it's over. Amen. And then, amen, that boy got killed. Amen. He was flying in his car. Amen. In his, in his little truck. He was very well known, very personal. Amen. Very nice kid. I, I met him. He called me daddy. And I, amen. I got to know these children. I had, Did you know I had to go in their turf to win them? They wasn't coming to no church, let me tell you. Amen. But I, uh, amen, I began to preach, talk to them. They come to the house. And one night they got to listening to the news. Amen. And they all, about 10 or 15 of them showed up at the house. Amen. They said, Brother, Mr. Vance, will you please talk to us about Bible prophecy? There's things going on and it's scaring us. Amen. And brother, I pulled a coffee table out and got down on my knees. And I prayed for them boys and girls around that living room. Are you hearing me right now? And tears are flowing down their face. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. There's more with us than they are of them. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the most shot on my that boy died. They called and said, would you come? Amen. We want you to speak. We went back to the racetrack. There was trucks lying as far as you could see. And they said, we want you to be our chaplain. We want you to pray. Oh, y'all not hearing me now. The beer can started disappearing. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, I'm going to tell you something. I feel what I'm telling you. When they pulled that boy out, amen, he was, they, they come and the, the paramedics came and it was so bad, amen, he sat there and looked at his legs and his legs wasn't there, amen, amen, they started pulling him out and his legs didn't come out with him, amen, and whenever, amen, are you hearing me tonight, whenever that boy realized that he was dying, he looked over there in the corner. He hit the glove box, and his Bible fell out in the floorboard. He had just been in my house. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something right now. We can stay in our clothes in church and expect the world to come to you. They're not coming to you. Hallelujah. And he reached over there. His legs didn't move, but he moved over there and got his Bible, knowing that he was moments from leaving out. And when the paramedics pulled him out, he was clutching his Bible when he took his last breath. Are oh, you hearing me? Just weeks before that, he would have never done that. But he come to the funeral when I was a preaching. You're not hearing me right now. You can turn against me if you want to. I don't care. Hallelujah. But all I can tell you is, when the devil said, son, you're never going to win your kids. Oh, hallelujah. 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 The devil said, you'll never get them back. He put us back together. Amen. God help us. I'm going to tell you something tonight. There's so much the enemy has put into the church's mind uh, in negative and uh, uh, downtrodden and condescending uh, that God cannot, will not, don't do anymore what he used to do. But I'm going to tell you right now, he still does. Uh, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. My kids got bitter because of church problems. I feel what I'm saying tonight. What are you trying to say, Brother Touch? I'm trying to say that the king has one more move. When all hope is gone. Brother, I cried myself to sleep a many a night when my family walked away. And the devil said, I've got you now, boy. You'll never survive this. Ooh, 
I, I, I'm actually borrowing this title from a, the man that preached the night that God delivered me. I called him. I said, can I preach this? He said, go ahead. Because it was in that service that I felt like hopelessness had taken over my life. I was at the bottom. I'm talking, you talking about the bottom. Honey, let me tell you. I can lay in my bed at night with nobody there. No furniture, nothing. And I could hear the devil walking around in my house, moving stuff off the floor. I could hear him, my hair standing on end. And the devil said, you're not going to make this. I've got you now. You're not going to survive this. But what I didn't realize in the darkness of my despair was the king had one more move. <laughs> I said the king had one more move. The king had one more move. The king's got another move. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Many years ago, there was a man, amen, that painted a, a mural. Amen. Of him and the devil playing chess. <clears throat> he painted it and put it in a museum. He was a world championship at chess. He was playing the devil in the game. The devil on that side of the table and he on the other. And at the top of the end of the picture, it said checkmate. Yeah. Now, I ain't never played chess before or whatever it is. But I, I kind of figured out checkmate means you done. Hmm? It's over. So one day, another man came through the museum, was looking at there, and they said he stood there for several hours, actually. And he looked, and he played that game in his mind. And he said, I want to meet the man that painted this picture. So they called the man, and he come to the museum. They say, he said, can I help you, sir? He said, I'm a world-class champion chess player. And he says, I got something to tell you. He said, what's that? He said, you put on the top of that picture that it's a checkmate. He said, but it ain't no checkmate. He said, the king has one more move. The king has one more move. I'm going to tell you right now, when you feel like all hope is gone, just remember, the king has one more move. I feel this all over my soul tonight. You may be in a desperate situation. You may feel like you've lost everything. But I want to tell you now, the king has one more, one more move. It ain't over yet. has one more move. Tell the devil the king's got one more move. Amen. The king of kings and the lord of lords has stepped in on the scene and when he's when the devil said it's over and your life is ruined and your ministry's ruined, the lord just showed up and said not today. The king has one more move. <laughs> oh, if somebody hear me preach. Glory be to God. The king. You might need help. I'll tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. Amen. You may feel desperate. You may feel like there's no hope and it'll never be fixed. But I want to tell you, the King. I don't care what the doctor said. There's always one last move. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. I told you I ain't that good a preacher. But I ain't here to be a preacher. I'm here to help somebody. Great God. <laughs> Brother, I melted that night in that altar. Amen. And the Lord God of heaven put his arms around me. Says he, you ain't going down yet. 
was the devil that said, you ain't going to make it. Hey, some of you in here tonight, the devil's told you that. There's some young people in here tonight to fuse. Amen. Let me tell you something. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now. Amen. Don't you worry about what the church does. There are going to always be crazy people in the church. There's going to always be a hypocrite sitting around somewhere with their religious pious hoopily hooting doodle doos. But I'm going to tell you, you don't depend on them. You put your trust in the king because there's more with us than they are with them. Hallelujah. When it's all said and done, hey amen, the Lord is going to come on the scene. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Sister, come to this piano. The king has one more move. There is more with us than they are with them. Amen. Great God of heaven, I feel the Lord in this place. Amen. You may be here tonight and think that there's no hope in your life. And the devil's had a better part of it. And that may be true based on decisions that you've made in your life. Things that you have done, sins that you have failed to. But that's not over yet. I don't care what the church does and how they treat you. He's the one that's going to pull you through. Hoot and doodle on the end of the aisle may not like you because you don't do what they think. But you just keep marching with God. You keep praying. Come on here now. The devil told me, he said, your church ain't never going to do nothing. Hey Amen. You're never going to have revival. In 2019, we had a revival that over 50 people got saved. Drug addicts was coming in the front door, sick and overdosing. Come on here now. When the church got to praying, God moved. Brother Ethan, the king. <laughs> I love it. Glory! Praise God. Amen. Whew. You may have children that's lost tonight. I got news for you. The enemy said they'll never come. But God said the king has got the last say. You may say your husband ain't never going to get saved. Your family ain't going to come. The king has got the last say. You may make mistakes in your life that you suffer for to this day. But I got something to tell you, honey. The king has got the last say. Woo. Ah, woo, that'll make you shout right there. Hallelujah. Amen to God. The devil don't want you to believe that you can have a life of victory and happiness and joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Praise God. Everybody ain't going to be your friend when you serve God. But there's one that will be. The king will. I said the king will. I said the king will. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hey, some of you ain't been happy so long. You, you come to church, you smiling, but down in here you're miserable. I got a little message for you. The king has got one more move. Because <laughs> the devil's a liar. Brother Ken, the devil's a liar. Brother Magnum, the devil's a liar. And the Bible said he's the father of every one of those lies. He's the one that belts some things up. Come on here. I didn't come here to make you shout. I come here to tell you tonight that the king. <laughs> he got one more move. I love it. The devil said, mm, I missed that one. But the king had one more move. Mm, I missed that one. They said, you can't. God says, oh, yeah, you can. Because you belong to me. I told you I'm simple. Ain't got no, all that stuff behind me. 
But what I do know is, is that the king I feel what I'm telling you tonight. And I really don't know. Sometimes God shows me what, who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, brother. Lewis. It's my first time preaching here. I'm going to tell you this. The Lord knows who you are. And you didn't show up tonight. You might have thought you did. We had a man get saved in this meeting. And that move of God some years ago. He pulled up in front of the church. Some of my folks can tell you this is a fact. Pulls up to the front of the church sitting at the sign out front. Had his 44 on his lap. Fixing to kill a man. On his way. To kill him. So he stopped in front of the church. I love it. To get his act together, how he was going to do it when he got there. And he heard something going on in that little church. And it got a hold of him. And he no longer could listen to the enemy. He had to listen to the spirit that said there's more with us. The devil said, go kill that man. But God said, come on in the house. There's plenty of room. Brother Clues, he walked in the front door sweating. I mean, he was sweating like he was dying. And the Holy Ghost fell in that house. We didn't know who he was. He hardly spoke good English. But the Holy Ghost got a hold of him. And said, I'd like to introduce to you. To the king. <laughs> Don't you love this? We became good friends. He works for me today. Praise God. I'm going to tell you what. He told me the next day, he says, somebody is alive today because of the king. Hey, that man will be in hell today if he waited for God. But the king made a play. <laughs> Aren't you glad that the king knows best? He's an all seeing eye. He's an everlasting father. He is omnipotent. I'm, I'm not present. He's everywhere. He knows everything. Not a secret in your head he don't know about. And every problem you face, he's concerned. The king has the last say. <laughs> Aren't you glad for it tonight? Aren't you glad the king of kings has got the last say? God is so good to his people. If it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? When all hell was breathing down my throat, my neck, the God of heaven said, not now. Praise God. You know why I jump around in church? You know why I act goofy? Because I met the king that fixed it all. You can sit there like a pickle if you want to. When you meet this Jesus, you ain't going to sit there like that. I told my church the other day, I said, when I get old enough and I can't do like I do, I'm going to get me one of them electric wheelchairs. I'm going to build a church with wider aisles. And if you don't shout, I'm going to run around that church with that wheelchair. I'm going to pop wheelies. I'm going to do something. Because you know why? He's been good to me. When I was down and out, he picked me up. was about to go over. He said, not today. One more move. I got one more move. Just one more. Ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo. You know what that life's all about? I'm laughing at the devil. 
because he thought he had me, but I got away. Praise God. Some of you are in the clutches of the devil, but God's a fixing to help you out of the situation. I said, God's about to help you out of the situation, but you got to let him. Sing, do something. Hold on one second. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. There's some young people in this room tonight that you feel like God does not care. You feel like some, there's some brothers, there's some folks in here now. They may be saved, but they're struggling within their spirit. And the devil's told them there's no need to try. You're not going to make it. I've been doing this 54 years. We'll, we'll soon be. And if I know God, I know what I'm telling you is the truth. They summon this room tonight. You're about to walk away from this. Some won't even make an effort. There's some in here tonight. Brother, Brother Clues, can I just take a minute and obey God? All of my life, I never saw my mama look anything but like a holiness lady. But you know what the devil said? I'm going to take her out. He did. He did. I never seen her like she was. I fell into a depression. When that little woman was the woman that prayed me through many times. And the very foundation of what I had believed in and stood on is now gone. Nobody helped me. No preachers come around to preach to me and say, hey, you're going to be all right. They were nowhere around. I had to depend on God. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but I will tell you this. My daddy's passed on. She ended up getting married to another man. He was about to die, brother Lewis. Mama called me. She said, son, she wasn't saved. She said, come pray for Charlie. I walked in that room in that hospital and he was in convulsions. The doctor said he'll not live a few more hours. I ain't going to lie to you. I was happy. He wasn't my daddy. But God saw bigger things than I did. I walked over there. Brother, Brother Ethan and I laid my hand on that man's head. And I started praying. But I wasn't the one praying. I wasn't speaking in tongues. But I was not the one speaking the words that was being spoken. And I'm thinking while I'm doing this, that ain't me. I kissed my mother and said, I'll see you later. Call me when he's gone. <laughs> called her the next day. She didn't call me. I called her. I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm at work. I said, work? I thought we was going to plan a funeral. She said, you need to go back to the hospital. I walked in that hospital room. And that man was sitting on the edge of the bed. With a blue jeans and a t-shirt. I said, where are you going? In my mind, I'm saying, I thought you were supposed to be dead today. he was going to go to hell if he'd have died that night so the king had one more move 
He pointed his finger at me and he said, you didn't see him. But he said, when you walked in the room and laid your hand on my head, he said, a man as tall as this ceiling walked in behind you and put his hand on your shoulder. God saved that old man. He got saved. Come on here now. He was at my church the following Sunday. That was on Thursday. God saved that old man. Kept him out of hell. He's an alcoholic, but God saved him. I'm tell you, sometimes we give up on people, but God never gives up on people. You may walk away from him and say, it ain't worth nothing. But God never gives up on him. Don't give up on the young people that don't care about coming. Because sooner or later, they're going to be on the front row. Come on, Glory to God. Huh? Come on here now. Tell me God ain't able to go get your grandbabies. We got a lot of senior citizens in the house. Glory to God. What about them kids? Tell me God can't do it. If he can go down yonder. And me is looking at this place with all these people that's full of the devil. Let me tell you, he can do anything. If he can save a man, and I wasn't praying, and he prayed, the devil said, he's going to hell, I'm going to take him. And I'm going to take your mama with him. <laughs> but a few days passed, and that little black backslid Holy Ghost lady walked in the front door of that church. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Wedding bells began to ring. Glory to God. I preached that morning. It was deader than cracker juice, if you know what I mean. But it wasn't her. Because guess what happened? The king said, not today, devil. You can't have her. And she walked down that aisle and gave her heart to God. Don't give up. Don't quit. The king. I don't, I don't know. I know, I know how church folks are. They'll come up here and bury their head in there because they want nobody to know they got troubles. But if you are in a mess tonight, if you need God to help you, I want you to get out of your seat right now. Don't wait till everybody gets up here and just mingle in the crowd. Sometimes you just got to do it. Matters what not, what nobody thinks. Come on here now. I want you to just get up and walk up here, right here in front. Because what it's going to say is to the devil, the devil said, it'll never work. But I want you to hear from another person, friend of mine, that says, I've got a plan you don't know about. What your eyes see doesn't always mean what's going to be. <laughs> Because I can take the nothing and make something out of it. I'm trying to preach, y'all. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy. You should be part of my church if you think that. Because we get crazy. Hmm? It's all right. How you believe? You believe that? Ha! He's able to do it. Because the king's out one last man. I love it. I found out to him be the real thing. You believe that? <laughs> He's got one more move for you. Mm -hmm. Just one more move. I feel what I'm saying. Yeah? Just one more move, son. I feel the Lord right here. I ain't trying to call nobody out and embarrass anybody. But God loves you. He cares for you. I was a preacher's kid myself. I seen the bad and the ugly brother. I read that book to you. I'm about done. I don't know what time it is. I ain't got no clock in this church. 
the enemy said, I'm going to take you out of here. I'm going to drag you back and put you where you used to be. But God said not. So I got one more move that you don't know about. Raise your hand, sister. Christy, come here, help me. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. The devil's lied to this young lady. I feel the Holy Ghost moving now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel him moving. Praise God. I feel him moving. You feel him moving, son? Praise God. Amen. I don't know you. Don't know your name. But oh, if you don't know Jesus, he's the greatest thing since last bread. <laughs> He'll help you. He'll make you a man of God when the world says we're going to take you and baptize you in the cultural filth of this world. God's going to give you the Holy Ghost power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, touch this lady right here, Lord. In the name of the Lord, turn it around. Turn it around, God. Turn it around. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know when. But do it. I feel it moving in this place. It's possible, sister. That's right. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I'm telling you, saints of God, will you help me pray? The Holy Ghost is a moving. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need some sisters up here. Why are you waiting on? Hallelujah. The king's got one more move. One more move, brother. Hallelujah. It ain't over yet. Come on, son. That's right. God's going to do for you. That's right. Hallelujah. What about you, buddy? Amen. What about you, ladies? Hallelujah. Say, I'm too young. No, you're not. You're not too young to have the Holy Ghost. I got seven and eight and nine-year-olds in my church been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hey, God help us tonight. Come on, sing, brother. Ethan, while the Lord's are moving in this place.